So in this episode, I want to talk about I.O. devices. I'm going to explain what an I.O. device is. I'm going to explain which software it works with. I'm going to explain why you'd even consider having one in the first place, because you don't actually have to have an I.O. device. And I'm going to give you some tips and tricks and stuff like that. So basically, I.O. stands for input output. So it's a way of getting a video and audio signal into your computer and out of your computer again. But really, it's down to quality. And I'll come to that in a moment. So there are literally tons of I.O. devices available depending on your budget, whether you want to work in HD, 4K, and depending how much connectivity you actually want, how many different types of connections you want. So we're going to look at the Blackmagic Design range because they're the only ones that are supported with DaVinci Resolve. You can't use an Asia card, for example, or a Matrox card. It has to be a Blackmagic Design card to work with DaVinci Resolve. However, those cards will also work with other products. So you can work with Final Cut Pro, Adobe Premiere, Adobe After Effects, just literally tons of Avid, tons and tons of different software that the Blackmagic Design I.O. cards also work with. So let's have a look at the range. You've got the cards order boxes. The cards are the Decklink range. They're literally a PCI Express card that sits inside your computer and all the connections are literally on the back of the card. Or you're going down the Ultra Studio route, which is the external boxes. So they start off about this size. This is not actually an I.O. box, it's a converter, but this is the sort of size that you're looking at. You'd have a little Thunderbolt 3 connection on the back connecting to your laptop or computer. And on the other side, you'd have a single cable, a single connector, which would be, say, HDMI or SDI in or out. So these are really tiny little boxes. They're brilliant. They're literally 100 quid. So it's a really good entry level way in to having your own I.O. device. The next range up is the Ultra Studio HD Mini, and then there's the HD, there's the Ultra Studio 4K Mini, which is this one. So this is the one that we use on set and for sort of portable uh, for portability if we're out with the laptop. This one is really nice and light, and we've got a fair bit of connectivity on the back. So we've got SDI in and out, we've got HDMI in and out, uh, analog audio connects to the laptop via a Thunderbolt 3 cable. The box that we use is the Ultra Studio 4K Extreme. So that has much more connectivity than this, and it's a 19 inch rep mount box. So that sits in the grading suite all times. So if you want to connect to this, you basically just grab a HDMI cable, something like this one. So make sure good quality cables. This is gold plated cable. And connect that in there. If I can get that in. That would then connect to my monitor. You've got your Thunderbolt 3 connection to your computer and that's you ready to go. That is an I.O. device set up. Now, you don't have to have an I.O. device to work with DaVinci Resolve. You can literally download the software, install it on your laptop, and off you go. So why would you want an I.O. device? Well, basically, it's about the connectivity, so I've got multiple inputs and outputs, but also the quality of the signal is giving me a far better viewing experience. So my Ultra Studio 4K Extreme is connected via SDI to my grading monitor. My grading monitor is calibrated, so I'm getting a true video signal feed from my computer to my grading monitor, but I'm bypassing the GPU. This is the key thing. The GPU is not giving me as good a signal as an I.O. device. So this means I'm getting an accurate signal coming out of DaVinci Resolve into my calibrated monitor. Now, it's important your monitor is calibrated because the signal coming out of the I.O. box, even though it's an accurate signal, will be represented incorrectly on an uncalibrated monitor. So for example, if my monitor was too cool, I'd be compensating for that visually by warming up the image when it didn't actually need it. So you still need to have a calibrated monitor. But the I.O. connection is bypassing the GPU, giving me the most accurate signal that I can get out of DaVinci Resolve. Now there is an option in DaVinci Resolve to work without an I.O. card using what's called Clean Feed. So Clean Feed appears only when you've got dual monitors. So you need two separate monitors on there, one for the interface and one is a dedicated video feed. And then you can just enable that in the software. But that feed is coming from your graphics card. So it's like a HDMI or a DisplayPort signal into that second monitor, preferably calibrated, and that will give you a permanent video feed. So this is a good way of working. Obviously, you need to make sure that monitor is calibrated or else, again, you'll be compensating for discrepancies in the monitor itself. But it's not as good as an I.O. because, as an I.O. device, because you're using the GPU to generate the actual video signal itself. And the graphics card video signal is influenced by the operating system itself. So it's not as good quality as using a dedicated I.O. device, which is giving you a true video signal. Now, there's several things you can do in DaVinci Resolve to assist that in a Mac. If you go to your preferences and go to system and then go to general, 
In here you can say use Mac display color profiles for viewers. And what that's gonna do is have a look at the operating system's color profile and display that on that monitor. So it's gonna give you a much better starting point. The other thing to remember is a lot of GPUs only export in 8-bit. They don't actually support 10-bit. So there is an option in here as well to say use 10-bit precision in viewers if available. But bear in mind that a lot of graphics cards still only display in 8-bit, which is obviously not as good quality as if you're using an I.O. card. Now, ultimately, whether you use an I.O. device or not, the final file is actually rendered using the GPU. What we're trying to do is get the best viewing experience and the best signal to your monitor so that you're grading as accurately as possible so when the GPU does that processing, your color looks the best it can possibly be. So the file that you're watching now on YouTube is processed by my GPU, but the signal I've been monitoring has been coming from an I.O. card. So hopefully it's left here the best it possibly can. It's gonna look different on YouTube, it's gonna look different on Vimeo, it's gonna look different on my dad's TV because everyone's got it calibrated slightly different. But it's left here looking the best it possibly can. And monitoring with an I.O. device can also help with things like gamma shift issues because you're looking at a true video signal. It's not influenced by the GPU. So if you're struggling to understand that, the takeaway from this is that an I.O. device is the only way to get a true video feed to your monitor. So a couple of quick tips if you're using an I.O. device. If I add a power window, you see that that comes up on my user interface and on my output monitor. Now what you can do is choose to have it on neither. If you press Shift and tilde, that gets rid of them both. Or if you go up here and go to View, Window, Outline, you can switch it off, on, or only on the user interface. So if I switch on here, I get my window shape on my interface, but not on my output monitor. So I get a nice, clean image to work with. You'll also see down here, this clip has a flag on it. And you can actually display those flags on your output monitor as well. So if I click up here and press Show Clip Flags on Video Output, that displays that on my output. So it's just a couple of little tips if you have got an I.O. card. So if you want to avoid the most common mistakes people make, click on this video here. It also shows you how to set up an I.O. device. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode.